to anti-aging tactics. I'm Richard Wolf, and tonight we are learning about how to maximize the benefits of your strength workout despite the fact that your muscles are aging. And so to do that, we really need to understand three basic truths. Number one, what is age-related anabolic resistance? We'll describe this and why it's important to both you and I. Number two, what should your post-workout nutrition look like? That gets increasingly important the older you get. And lastly, what should your per meal nutrition look like? What should you be eating at each meal throughout the day to optimize adaptations and health benefits from your strength workout? So let's look at number one, which is anabolic resistance, age-related anabolic resistance. This basically is what happens to your skeletal muscle as you age, where you're not adapting as quickly to the straining stimulus, the strength workout, as you did when you were younger. And so this simply means that it takes a longer time for muscles to adapt from what happens in your workout. We call this a decrease in muscle protein synthesis. And it's nothing that we can escape, it's a basic change in the physiology of skeletal muscle as we age. Everyone on the planet is going through this. And this is really relevant tonight for folks that are about 50 or older, because that's where we really start to see this slowdown in the muscle repair process. And this is thought to be linked to a loss of sensitivity in signaling pathways. So what's happening is we're, the skeletal muscle isn't getting the same signal that it used to get to rebuild and repair at the same rate that it did when we were younger. So everyone has to deal with this at some point in time and our presentation tonight is really geared towards folks that are late 40s, 50 or so and beyond who are actually living through this issue of anabolic resistance. Really considered a normal part of aging. Let's talk about how we can work around it and still get the benefits from our strength workout that we want. And so that really relates to both post-workout nutrition and per, wheel, per meal nutrition. And so let's talk about post-workout nutrition for a second. So we just told you that anabolic resistance is a decreased sensitivity within signaling pathways. And so how do we offset that? The first thing we can do is take advantage of the fact that muscle protein sensitivity is extremely elevated immediately following a strength workout. And so if you're a med fitness member, you've heard me talk about this before. Scientists call this the anabolic window. And so I've had quite a few studies, quite a few scientists that have evaluated this over more than a decade now. And what we know is that immediately following the strength workout, your skeletal muscle is very sensitive to protein, meaning it can absorb and utilize protein to help build muscle at a very high level immediately following the strength workout that sensitivity decreases over the next 24 plus hours. And so what we want to do is take advantage of the timing issue here. If we know that you did a tough workout and that sensitivity is as high as it's going to be in the first several hours and then it's going to start to decline, we want to get some protein into your body within those first couple hours following the strength workout. And so to do this, the best evidence to date that we have really suggests that about 10 grams of essential amino acids can upregulate this muscle building process following a strength workout. Now you might be saying, well, how do I know if I'm getting 10 grams of essential amino acids? I don't even know what the essential amino acids are. Well, we know those are building blocks for skeletal muscle, and we know there are nine of them that are essential that we have to get through the food we eat. So let's convert this to total protein for you. When you look at high quality proteins. And if you're not sure what high quality proteins are, you can look at our protein guide here in the studio that has a list of high quality proteins. You can see on our learning center at the proteins in our protein guide to get uh, options as well. But basically it's typically animal protein and certain plant proteins. And so you want about 20 grams of high quality protein to get those 10 grams of essential amino acids, all nine essential amino acids in optimal levels to really upregulate this muscle protein synthesis and offset that anabolic resistance so that we are 
driving the muscle repair process forward intentionally by getting these important building blocks into our blood sooner versus later when again sensitivity is extremely high over those first several, several hours following your strength workout. So this is an easy win. You don't have to eat a truckload of food to pull this off, but to get 20 grams it could be about three ounces of meat, fish, or poultry, a typically a protein bar or a protein shake can get the job done, three ounces of tuna can get the job done, a couple eggs and about an ounce of cheese can get the job done. If you're a vegetarian or you're looking for a plant option here, about a cup and a half of legumes will give you that 20 grams of protein. So it's not a gargantuan amount of food necessarily, but the issue here is high quality and timing following that strength workout at this specific threshold. And so if we do that, we begin to take advantage of that sensitivity and minimize the anabolic resistance that our muscles are normally experiencing as we age. So that's step number one. And anyone who's here at MedFitness has heard us talk about this. It's an easy win. It basically says to you, hey, you just did a hard workout. You want to take one simple step to get even more benefits from the strength workout. And of course, the answer should always be yes. So number one, post-workout nutrition, 20 grams of high quality protein that will deliver those 10 grams of the nine essential amino acids to help build up muscle right off the bat. And then number two is very similar to that per meal protein. And that's gonna be a slightly different number because again, unless I'm just working out all day, every day, which of course we shouldn't be doing, that sensitivity is gonna be diminishing. So if I eat later that night, let's say I did a 1 p.m. workout, and I was then having my dinner at 6 or 7 p.m. That sensitivity has gone down to some degree, and now we need a slightly higher level of those essential amino acids to, again, upregulate the whole muscle building process. We really refer to this as a surge in essential amino acids. So the number I'm going to give you just kind of as an easy off-the-cuff number to refer to for most adults would be at least 30 grams of high quality protein at each meal. So again, how do we get 30 grams? Well, we just looked at 20. It's gonna be a little more food than 20 grams was, but again, four to five ounces of lean protein can get the job done. So it's not like you have to have an enormous steak to really optimize this muscle building process uh, at each meal. Now, a couple key points here. 30 is a general number. Most adults will do well if they get 30 grams of high quality protein at each meal. But the, the key message here is that we want that across all meals. I'll talk about that in just two seconds here. But if you want to be more specific to your body weight, let's take myself, I'm 190 pounds. I want to kind of dial into my body weight. Take your weight times 0.13 grams per pound. So 190 multiplied by 0.13 gives me 25 grams. So that's my per meal number, 25 grams at each meal across all meals throughout the day. Now, is it okay to have more than that? Of course it is. And most meals in the United States, whether it's at home or out, are gonna provide typically 25 plus grams of protein. If you go up a little higher, there's typically no harm in that. You simply need to know that you can't go up to 100 grams and expect that that's going to triple muscle building. It doesn't. The benefits tend to level out at about 40 grams of protein per meal. The, the best evidence we have here suggests that as we start going up above 40 in a meal, we see increased rates of protein oxidation, which simply means we're burning off that protein. It's not being integrated into uh, skeletal muscle. So take your weight times 0.13 to get your specific number per meal or use 30 as a broad number that works for the majority of adults if you just want to keep it really, really simple. Now I said we need this across all meals and so the mistake that we see with our clients and the scientific literature would bear this out is that many adults, particularly as they're getting older, tend to have low protein meals and where most adults miss protein ironically is at breakfast. They'll get up, they may have some sensible foods but they're not getting up to that 30 grams or whatever it is for them to really start the day on a muscle building note. So I'm gonna recommend that you look at your meals and again, you can look at our protein guide to 
do a quick assessment here, whether it's in the studio or online, uh, and see whether or not your choices are stacking up to that 30 grams or body weight times 0.13. I'm gonna suggest that you may have a meal during the day where you are low protein and you're missing out on the muscle building benefits of those amino acids by being too low. Again, this is a shift in our thinking with protein turnover and protein dynamics. We now know that it really is this big increase in all nine essential amino acids all at once that really seems to regulate that muscle protein synthesis and drive it up to a very meaningful level. So we want to be cognizant of that and not just say, oh, I had, I had some yogurt and so I got some protein. And well, you did get protein, but you didn't get enough protein to really push up muscle protein synthesis and get the best bang for your buck given you're working out and you're trying to protect your health in general. So. What have we said? Everyone is susceptible to anabolic resistance. It's a normal shift in skeletal muscle as we age. Don't worry too much about it as long as you're eating to offset it. Number two, your post-workout nutrition should be 20 grams of high quality protein to really take advantage of the fact that you just had a tough workout and your muscles are very hungry for amino acids to build new muscle tissue. And then lastly, your per meal number of at least 30 grams of high quality protein or customize it to your body weight times 0.13. And the key message here guys is across all meals. So for me, if I wanna optimize my muscle building and strength gains, I need to take that number and do it four to five times a day to really get to the maximum threshold where I'm really optimizing overall benefits. So at the very least, do that at each of your meals. If you're not getting three meals, do it through a couple meals and a snack or a fourth snack if you need to, but definitely do it across all meals to get the absolute best benefit from your strength workout. Thanks for attending tonight, guys. Again, if you want to see our protein guide, you can go to our learning center. That's medfitnessprogram.com forward slash blog, or you can pick up a copy in the studio here. You'll also be able to see this video at our learning center within a few days if you want to watch it again or share it with someone that you know is interested in strength training. See you next month. Okay, sir. All right, boss. Very, very, nice. very good.